The kids' Christmas program is Sunday, December 16th at 6 p.m. here at the church. You do not want to miss this. Immediately following the program will be the all-church hot chocolate ugly sweater Christmas cookie fellowship. Come enjoy the show, wear your best ugly sweater, there will be prizes, and bring your favorite Christmas cookie to share. Our Christmas Eve candlelight service will be at 6.30 on the 24th. Join your Glad Tidings family as we celebrate Jesus' birth. During this holiday season, there will be no Wednesday night services on December 26th or January 2nd. God bless you. We love you. Thanks for listening. Well, good morning, everybody. It's good to see everybody here today. Man, you're looking good with a couple extra cookie pounds on you. It looks wonderful. I've got a couple of hot chocolate pounds on me, but that's all right. Welcome to all those who are joining us online. We're so glad that you are a part of, of our service today. Glad Tidings GT Church is a place where you can encounter the life-giving message of Jesus Christ. He gives us hope and fills us with joy. So we're so glad that you are a part here of GT Church. And Bethany and I hope that you have a wonderful Christmas season with friends and family. And if you don't like them, come back and we'll be your friends and family. And uh, we're just so, so thankful. And uh, tonight's going to be great. I'm going to wear my ugly sweater. Hopefully you're going to wear yours. So um, be, be here tonight. And um, somebody's like, you're already wearing an ugly sweater. But I'll wear a different one tonight. So... Um, <laughs> But last, last uh, couple of weeks, we have been in our Advent series, and we've been celebrating Advent. And Advent is just a time to, to take five and remember why Jesus came. And it's a time where we take four weeks leading up to Christmas Day and look at what Jesus brought to the world. And so the first week of Advent is the week of hope, and the second week is the week of peace, then this week, the third week is a week of joy, and the last week is a week of love. And if you've missed any in the series, or if you miss any, you can go to our YouTube channel, and you can watch those there. But let me tell you, it's better live. So if you can make it here, make it here. So this week, we're going to continue our series and with joy. Joy, the arrival of deliverance. I love, man, I love Christmas season. I love all that it represents. Christmas is quickly, quickly approaching. Anticipation is building. The culmination, the climax of the season is upon us. Christmas morning is coming, and it's just so exciting. And let me just give you a little tip. Before you open your presents and before you do, do uh, your regular Christmas thing, let me challenge you to read the Christmas story. And you can find the Christmas story in Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through chapter 2 and 23. Or you can look in Luke's gospel, or chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. And read, take time to give Jesus a Christmas present. Take time, to, because it's all about him. Because without Jesus, it's just a mess. Because we have to put Jesus in the center of our celebrations. It's Christmas. It's Christmas. It's all about Jesus. So let me encourage you just to take a few minutes and read the Christmas story. And if you're reading it in front of anybody, let me encourage you to pre-read it so you know you get all the names right in Cyrenius, the governor of Syria, and all of that. Maybe you want to practice that seven or eight times. So anyways, uh, pre-read it, but let Jesus be a part of of your Christmas morning celebrations. So, um, but everything here is about, uh, the Christmas season is about Jesus. Don't miss this. It is about the concept of Emmanuel, God with us. We talked about it last week. It, I'm going to talk about it again right now because this is what Christmas is all about. Jesus putting on humanity to come and bear our sins and our sorrows. It's not just God over there in the cosmos, somewhere on the backside of the universe, but God with us, spending time and eternity coming into our world, coming into our situation, and knowing what it's like 
to be rejected, knowing what it's like to feel love, know what it's like to, to eat and be hungry and sleep, to walk, to, to talk, to skin your knee, to feel love. He is Emmanuel, so he could be a perfect uh, perpetuation, a covering for sin, a perfect priest, a perfect one who administers God's love. He put on flesh, he put on humanity and dwelt with us. The Apostle John puts it this way. In his gospel, chapter 1, verse 14, it says, The Word became flesh. God became flesh. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, tabernacled amongst us. He dwelt. He pitched his tent. He came and he dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the Father, full of grace and truth, the incarnation of the Son of God, to live among women and men, to know what it's like to be us. So today with this idea of Emmanuel, of God interjecting himself in our world, let's look at this idea of joy, joy to the world, looking Jesus coming to earth brings joy to you and me. Joy to the people everywhere you see, joy to you and me. I love that little jingle. Joy to the people everywhere you see. Come on. Joy to you and me. All right. You're good. Good. You should join a choir or something. Go to church. Awesome. So we're going to look at uh, Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. And let me give you a little context to what we're looking at here. Is the people of the nation of Israel, they had been waiting for a deliverer for over a thousand years. They've been hearing prophecies that a deliverer, a Messiah would come. Messiah means the anointed one, one who is appointed and anointed to do a specific job, that he was going to be God's man to deliver his people. And they have been waiting for over a thousand years, and the prophets of old had foretold the special anointed one from God was going to be able to deliver them from their oppressor. Just like Moses delivered them from the land of Egypt under the thumb of Pharaoh, God was going to send somebody just like Moses to deliver them from the clutches of their oppressor. Now, in this context here in Luke chapter 2, it had been over 400 years since God had sent a prophet to remind them of his promise. But the people had not forgotten. Even though it had been 400 years, they were still remembering that one day God's going to send a Messiah. One day God's going to send a deliverer. Just like he sent Moses and he delivered them out of the hands of the Egyptian. God's going to send somebody and deliver us out of our oppressor. God's going to send somebody and break the back, they thought, of the Romans. He's going to come and deliver us out of this oppression. And so this is where we find this, that one day Messiah would come and deliver them. So this, this is the background to this text. Let's read Luke chapter 2, verse eight it says and in the same region there were shepherds out in the fields keeping watch over their flock by night and an angel of the lord appeared to them and the glory of the lord shone around them and they were filled with great fear and the angel said to them fear not for behold i bring you good news of great joy say great joy That will be for all people, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a deliverer, a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those whom he is pleased. And when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds looked at one another. They said to one another, Let's go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. And they made haste and found Mary and Joseph. Say found. found. 
and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told to them concerning the child. And all those who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Wow, what a story. That's an amazing thing that had happened. After hundreds of years of waiting, as waiting for the prophecies to be fulfilled, an expectation of God to send the deliverer, it happened. That's the one thing about faith. And it's got to happen. Someday it's got to come to fruition. Someday it's got to happen. And for the shepherds, that day, that night, was the day the prophecy was fulfilled. What a great, exciting thing that happened to them that a deliverer finally was in their midst, the culmination of the ages in this small little town of Bethlehem in a small manger. The announcement of his birth was to the shepherds. Wow, this was, these shepherds, they were not in the in crowd. They were kind of on the out crowd. But these are the people that God chose to show himself to. People um, who were stinky and smelly and on the back side. They weren't even in town. They were out of town of Bethlehem. But these are the people that God chose to announce the birth. And um, I think one of the reasons why God chose the shepherds is because they'd be comfortable walking into the stable. They'd be, comfor- they'd be comfortable with the surroundings and that they would know, they would know where to step, if you know where I mean, what I mean. And so God told, God told them and he gave them a sign, a special sign that the baby wouldn't be wrapped in a baby blanket. No, the baby wouldn't be wrapped in, the, in, in grandma's finest blanket. No, the baby would be wrapped in streets, strips of cloth that be used for cleaning the stalls and for other things. This was a crude uh, wrapping that Jesus was in. And so they knew what the angel was talking about. They probably knew the right stable to go to. They they probably knew exactly where to find it. It didn't say it didn't take them. It didn't take them very long. They found Jesus. They knew where to look, and so the shepherds came and they recognized uh, the signs, and they went exactly where they were supposed to go. And isn't it amazing that the that the high priest, the angel, didn't come to the high priest? That the Pharisees, the angel, didn't come to the Pharisees because they were supposed to be looking for the signs and right under the nose of the religious people. God was bringing the deliverer. Now, it didn't go without notice. I mean, 5,681 miles away as the crow flies from Jerusalem, people in Babylon recognized the signs, and they came two years later and presented him gold, frankincense, and myrrh out of joy. And so there were signs. If you were looking, there was a sign to follow. But the people in Jerusalem were too busy, too short-sighted to see what was going on. What an incredible sign story that God came among common men, uh, among people who he wanted to know. And uh, in this story, man, this story is so exciting. It's full of action. It's full of joy. It's full of exuberance. And I'd like to point out a few simple things that we can learn from this story. And they're simple because I don't do complicated. I'm, I'm simple. So let me pass on the simple things on to you if you're taking notes if you can if i'm not talking too fast because i'm excited here uh if you're taking notes the first thing i want to point out is god wants you to know the good news deliverance has come this is what i see in this story that god didn't just quietly let jesus be born but he announced it He wanted somebody to take notice. He wanted somebody to know that the deliverer had come. And not just for people who studied and not just people who knew the prophecies, but everyday, ordinary people. He wanted the working people to know. He wanted every people from all classes to know. He wants us to know that there is a deliverer, and it's good news. Man, can you just hear the excitement in the angel's voice when he says, 
I bring you good news of great joy. He's like, this is going to change your world. This is going to change your existence. This is good news. I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be for all people, not just some people, not just people with the right last name, not with people with, with, that have enough money to go to school, but to everybody. This is good news to everybody. And God wants everybody to know that there is a deliverer. Amen. The whole point of the good news of Jesus is for people to know about it. That's the whole point. If we didn't know Jesus came, there would be no point in him coming. If we didn't know about it, then Jesus would live and die for nothing. But he wants people to know about it. And so God sends his angel to tell the shepherds. And I love this story because it is filled with excitement when the, the angel gives the announcement to, to, the, to the shepherds. All heaven empties out and fills the sky. They can't help but say, hey, this is awesome. This is the culmination of the ages. This is God doing something for the world. Glory to God in the highest, in the highest heaven. Glory to God to everywhere that his creation has been and on earth to people who his favor rests upon. Heaven empties out, and there is an excitement. There is a joy. You know it's going to be good when heaven's happy. When heaven's happy and can't contain their joy, and they just bust open, and everybody, I mean, everybody's there. Uh, they empty out, and they declare the joy. God wants you to know that there's freedom, and there is deliverance from your problem. Praise God. There is deliverance from our sin sickness. The root cause of our problems is sin. Humanity's sinfulness. We live in a broken world. It doesn't take you five minutes watching the news to know that we live in a broken world. We live in a broken society. We live in a broken town. We live in a broken county. There are, there's trouble on every hand, and um, there is uh, abuse done to people, and people doing abuse, and we live in a broken, heart-broken world, sin-ravaged world, and human, human nature is selfish in nature, selfish desires, and so here we are hurting one another, broken people, hurting people hurt people, and hurting people hurt back. And so here we are in a broken world and in need of a deliverer, somebody to deliver, to deliver us out of our trouble, somebody to forgive us from abuse, and for somebody to heal us from abuse. And so we have a need, our world has a need for deliverance. There's a need for a deliverer. God doesn't want us to live in despair. There's oppression, abuse, despair, loneliness, and trouble. And these things are done by others to us. And some of these things are done by us to others. And in our world, people are looking for answers. They're looking for truth. They're looking for something to numb the pain. There's, there's, they're looking for something to take away the guilt. They're looking for a deliverer. And some people, the world would say, that find what makes you happy, and that is your truth. But friends, the, finding what makes you happy and you following your own heart produces more despair. It produces more heartache. It produces more trouble because our hearts are selfish. Only God's truth, only his way leads to fulfillment because his way leads to freedom. His way leads to healing. And so he has brought us 
a deliverer. God wants you to know that there is a de- de- deliverer. There is a way of escape from despair. There's a way of escape from depression. There's a way of escape from, dis- from heartache and despair. He wants you to know that there is a deliverer today. And you can have hope. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So next, if you're taking notes... The good news produces joy. The good news is there's a deliverer, and then the good news produces joy. It gives us joy when Jesus saves us. So first of all, what is joy? What is joy? It can be difficult to differentiate between joy and happiness, to happy and joy, because they have very similar feelings and effects. And so happy, it's, it's good to be happy, but happy is an in-the-moment feeling of pleasure, gratitude, or delight. But joy moves us a little deeper. It's a deeper appreciation for the bigger picture of the situation. It brings the same kinds of feelings as happy. It brings pleasure, gratitude, and delight. But happy is, as my baby sister Christelle told me, and so I, I, I like to li- listen to the, the millennials. I, I ain't one. But uh, she says, I feel happy when somebody brings me my favorite latte. <laughs> but I feel joy. I feel joy when I think about uh, the... Um, I feel joy is an appreciation of everything that's associated with that act. That I think about the person who gave it to me. I think about, uh, let's see here. I think about the provision that it brings. I, bring, I think about the satisfaction. And I think about the thoughtfulness about it. And all the things that are, are tied to it. And it brings me Joy. Joy is longer lasting. Happy is more fleeting. Happy is a great feeling, but it's fleeting. It doesn't last very long. But while joy is an attitude, it's an appreciation that has longer lasting effects because it's an attitude. And uh, we absolutely can feel both happy and joy at the same time, but joy lasts longer. Because joy is an appreciation. Joy is an attitude. Joy is a a realization of what is going on. That's why we can have joy and be sad. Because we can have an appreciation of what's going on. And it can go deeper than just uh, temporal feelings. But it's an attitude. It's a realization. It is knowing what is happening here. And so uh, we have a feeling of joy when we understand the deliverance that Jesus brings. When I understand the, the, the way that Jesus delivers, that he has come to deliver me from my selfishness, and he has come to deliver me from my oppression, that he has come to deliver me from abuse that people have, have given me. He's come to forgive me of abuse that I've given to other people. He, this is what brings me joy, to know that there is a deliverer, that death can't stop it, that the grave can't contain it, and abusers can't take it away. What a great thing that Jesus brings. He's our deliverer. He's our hope. He's our everlasting joy. He's the one whom the the prophet said uh, about those who are ransomed of the Lord. In Isaiah 51, 11, he says, And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. And everlasting joy shall be upon their heads, and they shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Praise God. Praise God. Everlasting joy. When we have the Messiah come, when we have Jesus come, and he wipes away our sorrow, and he comes and he delivers us from our sin, everlasting joy comes on our hearts, comes in our lives. (laughs) It's so good to know Jesus. Everlasting joy. The good news produces joy. 
Praise God. Next, if you're taking notes, another thing we see here is the good news. For the good news to produce joy, it must be acted on. For good news to produce joy, it must be acted on. I love this part. Because the shepherds, when they got the news that the Messiah had come, they didn't roll over and go back to sleep. They didn't say, wow, that was bad pizza. <laughs> they received the message. They said, let's go and see what the Lord has made known unto us. Let's go see what God has for us. Let's go see what he has provided for us. Friend, God wants to deliver you from your trouble. He wants to... He has sent a deliverer to you, but you have to receive him. You have to act on what you've heard. Too many Christians, they live in defeat and despair because they don't act on what they know. They say, well, that was good for Sunday, but I'm not going to continue in it. We have to act on what we know. If we want to receive his peace, if we want to receive his joy, we have to act on what we've heard. What do we know? We know that God sent Jesus, and Jesus lived a sinless life so that we could be free from the effects of of our own sin, that he died in our place, that he rose again on the third day, effectively canceling the power of sin and death forever. Man, that's good news. And we can, for, we can forever live with God in eternity, for eternity in heaven, that he has canceled our sin, that he has rose, risen again from the dead. And if he's risen again from the dead, that that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in us, that I can live victoriously, I can live in health, I can live in his blessing, I can live in his peace. And no matter what storms comes my way, I can live in joy. Sometimes all we need to do is to remind ourselves what God has done. Now, it's okay to be sad. Sometimes we're just blue. But let me tell you, a good way to get out of the blues is to remind yourself of all the things that God has done for you. To know that he saved you when you, when you shouldn't have been saved. When you shouldn't have been loved, he loved you. When you shouldn't have been brought out, he brought you out. When you shouldn't have had peace, he gave you peace. When you shouldn't have been healed, he healed you. When you shouldn't have, when you shouldn't have had joy and peace and strength, he gave you peace, joy, and strength. And friends, let me tell you, that's enough to, to turn you right around from any bad mood, just to begin to count the blessings of the Lord, to know that he is good, that the blessing of the Lord makes rich, and it Adds no sorrow to it that, that, uh, that he loved us when nobody else loved us. And when we were still enemies of God, Romans 5 says that Christ died for us. He said, the Apostle Paul writes to the Romans, for a good man, perhaps somebody will dare to die. But when you were an enemy of God, when you were a dirty, rotten scoundrel spitting in God's face, he died for you. Man, that's amazing. Man, I've got good news for you. Jesus has come to deliver us from sin, sorrow, and sadness. He's come to give us joy. Friends, he's come to give us peace. He's come to give us hope. He's come to give us life. This is a good message Amen. that, that Jesus loves us, that Jesus came for us, that Jesus gives us us joy. The, the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ gives us joy. Joy comes from living out the good news, from knowing God and from having faith in what he said and believing and knowing that he will do what he said, knowing that what he said is true and that he will perform what he said. Awesome. Awesome. Praise God. Can we give the Lord praise to this morning? Hallelujah. Man, God is good. He's so good. He's so good that when, when he's bad, he's good, and he's never bad. He is just amazing, and he loves us, and he is, he is 
come to rescue us. Friends, there is a deliverer. I, there have been times in my life when I was, was just rocked by despair and knowing what God has done for me brought me out. Knowing that he was right there in the middle of my trouble and that he forgave me, that he loved me, that he was with me. He brought me out of deep, dark depression and despair and he fills us with joy. Friends, I just want you to know that if you're going through a hard time, it's not sin to go through a hard time. If you're suffering through some depression and despair, it's not a sin to go through it. But friends, let me, let me tell you, he wants to bring you out. He has come to deliver you. He's come to be with you. He's come to give you joy. As the song says, it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. He has come to give us joy. Lastly, if you're taking notes this morning, God's joy affects everything. His joy affects everything. Once the shepherds saw what God said was true and real, you couldn't shut them up. They had to tell everybody. They had to tell somebody. They had to say, hey, this is what God showed us. This is what God did for us. That God saw lowly, stinking shepherds, and he stopped, and he took notice of us, and he said, you are worth me telling the good news that there's a deliverer. There's a deliverer for you. There's, if there's a deliverer for the Pharisees, there's a deliverer for you. It's a, if there's a deliverer for the high priest, there's a deliverer for you. If there's a, a deliverer for the, the, the religious class, there's a deliverer for you. God stopped and said, there is a deliverer for you. And it changed everything. It brought these, 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 these men who were groggy and sleepy in the middle of the night it changed their whole perspective and they felt the joy it affected everything around them for the christian horrible horrible things can come our way and they will and they have but when they come we can still have joy he takes away the sting that life throws at us because he has conquered death the joy effect is the secret of the Christian life. It's more than just happy. It's a realization of the love and peace of God. It is the joy effect. It affects my relationships. It affects my work. It affects my attitude. It affects the atmosphere of my home. Joy, the joy that God brings is, is it changes the atmosphere of my heart. It changes the way, it affects the way that I deal with conflict because I come from a place of joy and not despair. It affects the way, uh-oh, it affects the way I drive my car. Ouch. <laughs> my son's gonna remind me of that in a minute. Joy affects everything that we do. Joy affects the way we do life. Some of us just needed a reminder that the joy of Jesus, it permeates our existence. Sometimes when we, when we leave church, we look more like we sucked on lemons than have been in presence of the deliverer. Sometimes by the time we get to the restaurant, every good happiness uh, that, we, that we had in church was left because we had to drive to the restaurant. The joy of Jesus affects everything, should affect everything that we do because we are saved, because he delivered us. He set us free. He's made a difference in our lives. He hasn't left us in our sin. He hasn't left us in our sorrow. He's transformed our hearts. We're going to go to heaven. 
Jesus has provided a way for us to be healed and whole. Whatever our heart has felt, whatever sickness is in our heart, is in our mind, he has come to heal and he has come that we might have joy. Praise God. Man, I love the name of our church. And we are glad tidings, not sad tidings. He has come that we might have joy. We, some of us need to lay down our, our sorrow. Sometimes we feel comfort, comforted by carrying around our offense, by carrying around our sorrow. But friends, it affects our outlook. It affects our life. It affects the way we do life. He's come so that you can lay your sorrow down and replace it with joy. We put on, uh, Isaiah 61, 3, we put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. We lay down our sorrow and we pick up joy. Now, I'm not talking about fake joy. I'm not talking about pretending joy. I'm talking about real joy. Allowing God to replace your sorrow with joy. To allow God to replace your abuse with healing. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. I want to remind you that Jesus' joy is real and it can permeate our situation and our circumstance and our existence. We're going to have some down days. We are. But the thing about the joy of Jesus is it always brings us back. We can have a bad day. We can have a down day. Yes, we can. But the thing about Jesus, the thing about the Holy Spirit, the thing about what He's done in our hearts is He always brings us back. Friends, I don't want to hedge. I don't want to, I don't want to hem and haw. I want to be clear. If you give your life to Jesus, He's going to give you joy. We're all in. We're all into this thing. I'm not hedging. I'm not going to say, well, He might give you joy. I'm going to tell you, He's going to give you joy. He's going to give you joy. He's going to give you hope. He's going to give you peace. No hedging. No hedging our bets here. We are all in. If you are all in for Jesus, he is all in for you. And he's going to give you joy. He's going to give you healing. He's going to give you restoration. Praise God. He's going to give you what he has. And what he has produces joy. Praise God. Hallelujah. Man, that makes me happy. And it gets down deep and it gives me joy. Praise God. Let me pray for you. Jesus, I thank you for my friends. Thank you for my church family. Lord, I pray that the blessing of God will be upon their lives, that the realization of what Christ has done on the cross, the realization of why he came would get into their heart, would get into their spirit, and it would push out sorrow. It would push out sadness, and it would give them joy. Lord, that hurt that, that sorrow that runs deep in their life, God, I pray right now in Jesus' name that it would be healed, that they would be able to lay it down and give it to you so that you can give them joy, that the joy effect would be in their lives, that the effectiveness of the gospel, that the greatness of the gospel, that the joy of the gospel would be in them, I pray, in Jesus' name. Lord, during the holiday time, sometimes we can get down, sometimes we can get sad, sometimes we can get lonely, but Lord, I pray that your presence would be in their lives, that your presence would so permeate down deep into their spirit, down deep into their soul, that the joy of the Lord would come bubbling up, that the life of God would come bubbling up into their lives and their hearts and that it would be contagious. Lord, your joy is contagious. Your love is contagious. So Lord, you are the Lord of hope. You're the Lord of peace. And you're the Lord of joy. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Romans in Romans 14. said the, the kingdom of God is not, is not about food and drink. But it's about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So, God, I pray that you would fill us with your righteousness, peace, and hope, and joy. In Jesus' name, praise God. With our heads still bowed, eyes closed, you're here today. And you just need an infusion of God's joy. 
You need some joy from Jesus. You need that joy effect in your life. You've been carrying around something for a while. Maybe it's been years. And you need the joy of Jesus, that joy effect in your life. If that's you, would you raise your hand? Say, yeah, that's me. I need some joy. I see your hands. I see your hands all around. You can put your hands down. Lord, you saw those who are carrying things around with them. I pray deliverance in Jesus' name. Lord, you are, you are our deliverer. So, God, I, come, I pray that you would come and deliver them from their sorrow. And you would heal it 